Hi guys, in this video we'll be reviewing the key features of human reproduction. I will talk about reproduction in general and then we'll uh, go through the process from the gametes through fertilization, implantation, gestation and parturition. Uh, so firstly, in general, so human reproduction, the way that humans reproduce or uh, make more offspring uh, is a form of sexual reproduction. That is reproduction where there are two parents, a male and a female. Uh, this is different to bacteria that reproduce asexually, for example. Uh, and this form of sexual reproduction has internal fertilization. So fertilization occurs inside the female and internal development. So that uh, what we call fetus uh, continues to develop uh, until the time of birth uh, internally in the female or the mother. So we'll start at the beginning with the gametes or the sex cells. Uh, so there are two forms of sex cells, the male sex cell, the sperm, and the female sex cell or gamete, the ovum. Uh, and these are produced in the gonads, the ovaries or testes, uh, through the process of meiosis. And when meiosis produces these gametes, these gametes are haploid. That means that they have half the number of chromosomes or half the amount of genetic material of a normal body or somatic cell. When these two gametes meet uh, inside the female, and this usually occurs either in the uterus or in the oviduct, these gametes fuse together to create a diploid cell called a zygote. Uh, so diploid means it has the full number of chromosomes or the full set of genetic material uh, to produce offspring. Uh, so that uh, going from those haploid gametes, each having half the number of chromosomes, to a diploid zygote. So you get half your genetic material from mum and half genetic material from dad. After fertilization occurs, that zygote starts dividing through the process of mitosis. Uh, so it divides from that one cell into two cells, then four cells, then eight cells. Uh, and once it gets to the stage of 16 cells, uh, that group of cells is now called a marula. Now a marula is a, a group of cells uh, that are identical to each other and have not started to differentiate or become different yet. The next thing that's going to happen is these cells are going to start to differentiate or become different. And this sees the first time that we see some structure inside uh, this developing offspring. Uh, and this stage is called the blastocyst. So these cells are starting along their path of eventually being whatever cell they're going to end up as, whether that's a, a brain cell or a muscle cell or a bone cell. This blastocyst is then going to travel down the oviduct to the uterus, where it will implant into the wall of the uterus, into the endometrial lining uh, that has become larger and nourished uh, throughout the menstrual cycle, and particularly in that second phase, the luteal phase of the uh, menstrual cycle, where hormones cause uh, the uterine wall uh, to be ready for that implantation so that it can nourish that blastocyst, allowing for implantation. From here, gestation or the pregnancy uh, continues, and that blastocyst will turn into the early stage of an embryo and then into a fetus by 12 weeks. And then it will continue to get uh, bigger and develop more uh, for roughly 38 to 40 weeks uh, in humans. During this time, that fetus needs nutrients. And the way that it gets nutrients is through an organ called the placenta. Now the placenta sits on the inside of the uterine wall uh, and is connected to the fetus through the umbilical cord. And basically what happens inside the placenta is that the blood systems of the mother and of the fetus come very, very close to each other, close enough to allow uh, nutrients to travel through the cells, uh, but not actually mix with each other. So the blood systems, the circulatory systems, are separate for the mother and the child. Um, however, the, they're close to each other so nutrients can pass across. And this is how placental mammals, including humans, can sustain a longer period of uh, gestation, uh, allowing for that further internal development of the fetus. At the end of that hopefully 38 to 40 weeks, 
the fetus will signal to the mother that it's ready to be born. Uh, and it's an interesting process that uh, involves hormones, uh, but basically the uh, fetus uh, wiggles and that causes contractions to start occurring or signals to the mother that it's ready to be born and that signals for contractions to start occurring. Now in these contractions, what's going to happen is the cervix, the opening uh, to the vagina from the uterus, which was closed with a mucus plug, is going to become thinner and dilate to allow the uh, fetus to then pass uh, down the birth canal. Uh, and it goes from uh, being closed to being uh, dilating to about 10 centimetres to allow the baby's head to fit through. Once the cervix is appropriately dilated, the mother pushes and the baby will travel down the birth canal and out the vagina. And that's where babies come from. In this video, we have reviewed the process of human reproduction. Uh, sexual reproduction. Uh, we've talked about the gametes, the sperm and egg that fuse together in the process of fertilization and then implant into the uterine wall uh, where they then gestate for roughly 38 to 40 weeks uh, before parturition where the baby is or labor uh, where the baby is born. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.